Well, hello, grandkids. This is your old great granddad. Case was making me read this, so I don't know what kind of job I'll do. But anyway, it's a little bit, a little bit of memory, a few memories about my time I lived in Pepperell Village. <coughs> Start out. Pepperell Village, a few of my memories. In nineteen, in the summer of nineteen forty-seven. My dad, my stepmother, my brother Bobby and I loaded up in my dad's 1939 Chevrolet, pulling a small trailer, and moved to Pepperell, house number 34, from East Tallahassee. I was 11 years old, and Bobby, I called him Bob, was 13. I remember crying over halfway because I didn't want to leave East Tallahassee and my friends. My mom and dad, mom died when I was eight years old, and Dad remarried three years later. Dad and Miss Estelle, as I called her, had been working in the Tallahassee Mill for many years. They got a job at Pepperell Mill. Dad is a loom fixer, and my stepmother is in the spinning room. Dad got a promotion not long after that to second hand. That's what we called a boss back then. I started the fifth grade, and Bob started the seventh. The village being small, I could ride my bicycle all over the village in 30 minutes. Being summer, school, summer and school not starting yet, it was pretty easy to make friends. We'd ride our bikes across, across the highway and down a steep dirt hill to Pepperell Lake. Harold Turner was lifeguard in the summertime. I got, a 50, cents, I got 50 cents a week for allowance and Bob got a dollar. I remember my dad said I would get a dollar when I started junior high school like my brother. Fifty cents didn't go very far. Even though soft drinks were a nickel, so was a pack of peanuts. So I started pretty quick collecting soft drink bottles and selling them to the only grocery store in Pepperell for a penny apiece. <clears throat> I wasn't the only one doing that, so I started selling soft drinks, peanuts, and popcorn at the Opelika Owls which are semi-professional baseball team, at the ballpark behind the highway patrol station at the edge of the village on the Opelika side. I made pretty good money there, around 2 or $3 each game, and when school started, I joined the Boy Scouts. But I had, a, had to be home by dark, and it was a lot of fun. I started in the fifth grade. Mr. Bailey was the principal, and Harold Turner was the coach of baseball, football, and basketball. I played all three, but wasn't the best player on the team for sure. Those honors went to Fred Birchfield, Phil Knight, and Benny Garner. I quickly realized who my role model was then, and frankly still is. It was Harold Turner, and he was not only my role model, but also a, uh, to a bunch of the kids, boys. I could give you a lot of reasons why, but I'll only mention a couple. He had more respect from the kids he coached and taught in school than anybody I've ever known. He was and still is one of the nicest guys I know, and I consider it a huge privilege to have known him for so long. When he coached, he didn't have to shout at us when we did something wrong. Him just talking to us was so much more impacting on us than shouting. He respected us as much as we respected him. There were several instances involving him I could write about, but one that really stood out for me that I will never forget is I played second base on our baseball team, and I was a better fielder than I was a batter. I don't remember who we were playing, but we were behind two runs in the seventh inning, which we only played seven innings at that time. We had the bases loaded in two outs, and it was my bat. Coach Turner called me back to the bench. I hadn't had a hit all day long, and he told me just to relax and not to try to kill the ball. The other team's outfield had pulled in because they knew I couldn't hit the ball that far, very far. I was trying to concentrate on what Coach told me, and lo and behold, I knocked the baseball over the right fielder's head, and I made it to third base. I'm, I bet left-handed. The ball rolled a long way because we didn't have outfield fences. Best of all, three runs scored and we won the game. Coach Turner was the first one out to congratulate me and all my friends came to third base to congr congr congratulate me as well. I felt like a hero for one game.
thinking about what he said to me and how he reacted after makes tears come in my eyes. That's the kind of man he, he has always been. When my other role model, my brother Bob, passed away six years ago, he and the, and the service for him was being held at Pepperell Baptist Church where Bob and Jane had been members for many years. Harold Turner and I were talking at his funeral and I had a chance to tell him how much he had meant to me and remind him of that instant, instance. He just laughed it off and told me he appreciated me feeling that way and that he didn't realize he had been such a role model. He was just being himself, just like my brother would be, but deep down he knew he was a good man. He had to. It was too obvious. Coincidentally, my brother Bob and Harold married sisters, Jane and Jean Leverett, two good women. Anyway, two days after I turned 16, I went to work in the wee room at the mill, blowing cotton off the looms. My dad, being a second hand, got me a job working for him on the third shift and going to school in Opelika and taking D.O., that means diversified occupation, which allowed me to get out of school at noon and go home and sleep. Soon after I started to work there, I bought my first car, a green 1948 Ford. I remember it cost $675. I would load it up with friends and stop by Pepperell service station and most times buy a quarter's worth of gas to get schooling back. That was almost two gallon then. Mr. and Ms. Gilmer ran the station then. I remember beside the station there was a real tall water tank, and we used to climb it and write our names on the tank. I loved Pepperell and especially the people that lived there. They were down-to-earth, hard-working people. Some of Bob's best friends were Teddy Evans, Bert Hornsby, and Skippy Jones. He had a lot more, but those are the ones that come to mind now. He joined the Navy before he finished high school, served three years, got his GED, and graduated from Auburn University. He was always proud of the Auburn Tigers football team. You probably already know he married the girl of his dreams, Jane Leverett, had three kids, and they never considered living anywhere but Opelika. He was one of Ampec's best employees for many years and retired from there. I'll let Jane tell you more about he and his wonderful, loving family. Halfway through the 11th grade in Opelika, I taught my dad and let me move back to Tallahassee, live with my sisters, and graduate there. As much as I loved Pepperell, I never lost my love for Tallahassee. After graduating from high school in Tallahassee, I joined the Army. Served two and a half years in Japan, then moved to Auburn. I worked at Ampex and transferred with them to Dallas, Texas, where I met and married my wonderful wife, Janie. We have two grown sons, one who lives in Hawaii and the other in Austin, Texas. They're not married and have no kids. Janie and I would love some grandkids, but I guess we'll just have to wait. I'm very proud to have lived in Pepperell Village and was always, and will always have a soft spot in my heart. I hope I haven't been too long-winded, but I write a book. I could write a book about it. Jenny, oh, that's it. <laughs> Say War Eagle. <coughs> War Eagle. <laughs> Be my Auburn outfit. I quit smoking two years ago, and that's what looked like I'm pregnant. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm still skinny. <laughs> Take care of your kids, Case. <laughs> Love you.